today what we're going to be talking about is something that a viewer requested. I don't know how much interest all of you people will have, but it is what to expect in the IBT. Now the IBT, if you don't know what it is, it's similar to the CBT, I think it is in England. But essentially it's like rider training uh, that you have to undergo before you go ride a bike on your own. Uh, well, I know that's the rule for here. I know they have different rules in Ingerland. But here, essentially, what you do is you have to go and pass your theory test, which is fairly straightforward. You know, I would advise if you're doing that to get the, the practice CD and just uh, do the, the sample tests like 200 times. And then you should be pretty covered after that. So what the IBT includes is uh, five modules. To begin, you need to do modules one, two, three, and four, okay? So that's usually done over two and a half, three days, uh, and costs around about four to 500 euro. I, I don't know the current prices, but it's, it's not actually a bad price for what you get, to be fair. And prices obviously also differ if you're bringing your own bike or if you're renting a bike. I brought my own bike, so I was on the lower end, I was about 400. Uh, you also need to check with your instructor, uh, whoever that may be, are they going to supply gear for you? Because some don't, and if they don't, you obviously have to get it yourself. To go through it real quick, um, I'm going to like voice over what's in each module later because it's too much uh, to remember for my, my puny brain, essentially. <laughs> So a quick run through of what the modules contain. If you go to rsa.ie, you can see what ev what's in every module. I will leave a link in the description, but just to run through it really, really quick, um, and I've broken it down into my own kind of words. So module one is it's classroom, so it's basic stuff, you know, your your equipment, motorbike controls, tech checks, motorcycle stand, all that good stuff, right? Walk on with the bike, and I'll bring you through some of them later in the video. Uh, module two, yard work, moving off, stopping. I'll do that in the video. Use of brakes, U-turn, um, use of gears. I'll go through some of these and the e-stop. The e-stop is a big one for me and I do go through that later in the video as well. Uh, module three is the class and yard. So again, very similar to one and two in my opinion. Um, it's just when you're talking more about you know rider fatigue, weather conditions. I'll go a little bit th through that as well later in the video, but not so much. Um, I can do a video of on the road if you want as well. If there's interest in it, let me know in the comments. Um, module four then is on the road. So this is actually your day-to-day -day riding stuff. You just really need to look out for you know, your junctions, all that stuff. Um, you know, observation, anticipation, reaction, all that stuff, right? It's, it's all in the on the road section. And my main advice here for module four, honestly, is just to take your time and listen to your instructor. They have an absolute wealth of knowledge there these these are guys who are on the bike all day every day and um, so really really take instruction module four you learn a lot if you listen and actually try here i'd already i already knew how to ride a bike uh, by the time I, I did my ibt um and module four is something i could have ignored but instead i paid attention and i did learn a lot uh, during it Module five then is your progression module. So this is if you want to move to an a bike or you know off automatics anything like that um so you can see there for direct access purposes to category A or A2. Uh, so blah, blah, blah. Right. Module 5. You can see there's a lot of stuff there, right? But module 5 mainly, it's it's kind of just a more advanced version of the rest of them. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, if, if you want to just do your OBT first off, it's 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, and if you want to do the progression module, it's 1, 3, and 5. And that's about it, really. It's as simple as that. And then, like I said, if you want to read this more in detail, um, I will leave a link in the description. The most important bits, to my mind, are the bits you're going to do during the full test. So the full test is all observation. And you do a little bit of yard work, which we'll go through up here as well. Um, but the bulk of it is observation, you know, anticipation and reaction, junctions, all that good stuff. So the, the full test is essentially a continuation of the IBT. The, the full test should be a little bit easier than the IBT of anything. Yay, the car park is open. Class. So something else you need to learn to do uh, in the yard is figures of eight, right? So I don't have cones, but I'm going to show you what that means. And there is kind of stuff on the ground here, is there? We're all right. So figure of eight, 
easy to do you know we'll use that you want to go around there and then around again just keep your keep your bike controlled and then we'll use this as a mark I should probably have brought cones but basically that's the intent behind it and always be looking you know where you're going you know and then u-turns are are different so for a u-turn what you want to do so basically with the u-turn what you want to do is quite simple okay there's two things you have to do you want to do a big look back which is you have to actually take your hand off the bars and look back then you want to uh, indicate check your mirrors one last look and you set off now what you want to do here then right when you're going I like to balance on my back brake you want to look left make sure you're okay come around like that you don't need to lean it too much and away you go so again you do all your looking that I just went through you indicate and you come around now this is quite narrow here and like for this bike I, I like to hold it on the back brake obviously you can do this faster you can do this neater you can lean like so and that's the u-turn that's all it is it's straightforward enough so now what we're going to do is we'll do the emergency brake and this is another pretty damn important one like I said you want to get up to we'll go second gear 50 kilometers an hour ish and brake controlled manner down to 20 and you're done it's pretty pretty straightforward you know and you should be able to balance your braking so you know exactly when you're going to stop you know it doesn't need to be brilliant it doesn't need to be perfect you don't need to be the best at it so again up to 50 control front and back brake down to 20 and I stopped way sooner than I meant to on the camera but anyway I wanted to try to get that closer the brakes on this bike are very good and one thing I didn't say about u-turns as well is obviously you don't need to do what I did and just hand off the clutch you can feather your clutch if your bike is different you know you can do an even tighter u-turn feathering the clutch working on your back brake it doesn't have to be how I do my u-turns you know another thing that you have to get comfortable doing is what I'm doing right now you need to be comfortable riding your bike at walking pace uh, beside your instructor so you see my bike I cheated a bit in the test I turned my idle speed down so I could just do this so once you get moving you're good to go another thing you need to be able to do is walking with your bike uh, just by hand so I'm gonna turn this now don't do what I do here <laughs> this is just for quickness sake but something you'll be able to ha have to be able to do is you know put your bike up on its side stand put your bike in a center stand so I assume you'll be able to do that but for a center stand put it down in the ground lean the bike over until it's like so and then what you want to do is just holding on to here and here just stand put all your weight onto that center stand it voila it's done it's actually that simple take it off center stand you push forward and leave it back down the side stand always make sure the side stand is down because if you push it forward and the side stand isn't down uh, and you drop it you're, you're gonna be bad you're gonna break your bike and or your instructor's bike which is probably worse so again you'll need to be able to walk with your bike which is easy up onto the side kick the stick, take kickstand down something that i know right so i'm leaning this bike on me okay which is fine for me a lot of people will be able to do this if you're a normal size human normal height human the best thing to do is lean the bike on your hip obviously i can't do that because my hip is way too high but what you want to do when you're walking with the bike is before you move off you do a nice glance see who's behind you and obviously there's no one behind me except probably mermen and mermaids and just cover that brake so when you're walking you want to cover that brake keep looking you know keep doing what you want take it handy you don't need to do this quickly another big thing um that you learn during the ibt is so reading road conditions uh reading your lane position all that good stuff and what i would suggest to you uh, for that is to listen to your instructor i these are my opinions this is rough guidelines to what you're going to expect an instructor will tell you far more than i ever could it's their job so honestly my biggest advice and my biggest thing that you should expect in the ibt is to learn uh, quite a lot if anyone would like a recommendation of uh, an instructor here in cork send me a message on instagram i'll happily recommend you the guy i did all my training with very very good good person and another thing that 
is actually in my opinion even more important don't pick someone who tells you they'll have you done in a day i know it sounds probably counterintuitive for some people that just want it done but do not do that you're just throwing away your money you're going to spend the money either way so if you're going to spend the money either way why not spend it on someone who's going to spend the time teaching you give you the full three days of attention you know what i mean it's it's far more beneficial than if you just do it to get it done you're not going to learn anything and the thing about it is with these instructors obviously they've been doing this their whole lives it's their job they ride the bike all day every day um to train people they know far more than i could ever tell you and they're far more experienced and better riders than i'll ever be so one last thing that i'll go through in this portion of the video is starting your bike and other technical checks so important stuff okay you need to know obviously which ones you brake, which ones you clutch your gears all that good stuff how you check your brake fluid so my sighting window is here you want to straighten the bike up and have a look at that lovely clean fluid i only changed it recently enough um you want to know where to check your oil which is here on this bike and you fill it here coolant which on this bike is in there and to check it is a pain in the ass but maybe don't tell your instructor that rear brake rear brake brake fluid upper lower generic stuff that's kind of your technical checks indicators they'll ask you to make sure your indicators work and how to do it easy way is hit that you know do your walk around the bike yada 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 once you do that and once you walk your bike as i showed you earlier you're going to want to start obviously and take off so how you start your bike is you start your bike you do all your looking i'm not going to sort of go through that again if you don't know how to check for avoidances ask your instructor but what you want to do to start right is when you're stopped in traffic your foot should always be covering your rear brake in case you get rear-ended that you don't go up over the bike if you get rear-ended you're on the front brake you're going to go up over the bike break your testicles and it'll front flip the bike whereas if you're on the back brake it'll shunt you so you can see there i'm way more stable so foot on the back brake at all times um except obviously when you can't but hill starting all that stuff foot in the back brake so to take off do your looks clutch in first gear so taking off you just want to there you go get your feet up and then stopping stopping is even probably easier but what you want to do brake 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 clutch foot down now my right foot i'll move forward my right foot is still on my rear brake here and it always is when i talk to you in this manner that's where my foot stays because like i said i'm nice and stable um and that's how you want to stop you know clutch in you're still in gear um all that good stuff and then neutral uh, neutral if i can find it kickstand down bike over and you're off and that's it so that is the finish of this bit on the bike and for the person who requested this number one i hope you watched the video to the more regulars i hope you found it moderately interesting uh to see my point of view on this stuff uh yeah there you go lastly uh outro crew i got a new osmo action you, you like it Ooh. anyway um if you watched thank you very much for watching if you found this video helpful and if you're the person who requested this video uh, I hope you found it helpful. I hope anyone finds it helpful, really. If you have any other questions, uh, don't be afraid to leave a comment or send me a message on Instagram. I try to be helpful as much as is possible. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. So for those of you who uh, stuck around, thank you very much. If you enjoyed the video, do let me know. I won't be doing something like this very often. It was just a, a request of a viewer, so... I do actually enjoy, you know, trying to fulfill viewer requests, so that's why that's why I did it. Um, apologies if it wasn't something you were interested in. Uh, like I said, it won't be the norm. But uh, let me know what you think of the job I did. I prob like to be honest, you could have done like two hours on this, or probably three hours, four hours a day. That's why there's a two and a half day course for it. But yeah, I am excited to use the Osmo Action um, on the bike. I just have to figure out how I'm gonna mount it and whatnot. Yeah. Anyway, I'm rambling again. Good luck.